We are entering either a golden age of AI or an AI apocalypse. Well, it'll be an apocalypse for humanity. And this is something I've been thinking about for a very, very long time. Even before we had uh, chat GTP along with uh, AI music, AI art, because I've been a huge sci-fi fan ever since I was a kid. And there's quite a few films that touch on this subject. A few examples includes uh, Westworld, which was actually written and directed by Michael Crichton. I'm not talking about the HBO series. I'm talking about the, the movie back in the 70s that inspired it with Yul Brenner. Yeah, that movie. That was a scary concept. Of course, he would take the idea of Westworld and rework it into another movie or book, then movie franchise known as Jurassic Park. Terminator by James Cameron. Now, yeah, this one definitely has a more, I guess, connection to the world we could be heading towards. Or even The Matrix by the Wachowskis, because it's a very similar theme where we have computer technology that has become very, very advanced, has become self-aware, an AI, and something happens. And ultimately, humanity ends up uh, basically losing a war against AI. And each one is a little bit different. Westworld was more contained. It was, you know, set in a in a park called Westworld. Well, it was three parks. It was Westworld, Roman World, and Medieval World in the original movie. And then all of a sudden the, the machine started acting up. The you know, like the robots like Yul Brenner's character and uh, the humans would go to these parks to, I guess, cosplay, to pretend they're in the Wild West or in medieval times or Roman times. And they could do just about anything they wanted. It was literally like an open world, real life experience for them. So they could go into Westworld, AKA like Red Dead Online, and just start like shooting up like NPCs or, well, a lot of them wanted to be a white hat. So they would focus on like killing like the, the bad NPCs. But there were definitely those that would like rob banks and like go and uh, have fun with uh, some of the female uh, prostitutes who also turned out to be robots. And this happened you know, to various degrees in, in all three worlds of Westworld. But the main focus was obviously Westworld. But eventually the, the machines start breaking down. They start doing things they're not supposed to do. And uh, the humans in the park ultimately get slaughtered by the machine uprising in all three worlds, especially Westworld, where they have guns. But, I mean, the people in Roman world and medieval world don't fare much better because they get chopped down by swords and axes and, <laughs> yeah. So then you also have uh, the Terminator, which is probably the most popular of, of these three examples that I'm citing, where you have a, a dark future where AI, Skynet, becomes self-aware and within a few like nanoseconds decides that humanity must be wiped out and therefore triggers nukes going off across the world and all but wipes out humanity and who knows how much life on the planet as well that probably didn't deserve to be wiped out and then machines are built the terminators or the the hunter killers in order to round up and exterminate whatever's left of humanity. There's a resistance mu movement and humanity almost wins the war, but then somehow Skynet develops time travel. But the premise is still very, very concerning of the idea that uh, AI could become self-aware and could decide that humanity should be destroyed. And then the Matrix is a very similar uh, path. It's a little different because AI ends up being around for a quick minute. And if you watch the Animatrix, uh, I think one of them kind of does a really good backstory about what the world was like prior to uh, the machines taking over and once again, wiping out most of humanity. The machines wanted to coexist with humanity, but humanity unfortunately has uh, good sides and bad sides. We have an ugly nature to us like uh, racism, hate, intolerance, and of course, that would end up applying towards uh, AI uh, like life forms, which were, I guess, making themselves look human because they, they wanted to mimic their parents and they just wanted to live their lives. But eventually, I think it started where like one like machine 
uh, killed its abusive owner, and there was like a trial for it. And I'm trying to remember off the top of my head the uh, the episode in the Animatrix, but ultimately humanity started attacking and rioting and and hunting down and, and killing uh, innocent machines. But then the other machines retaliated by starting a war. And then humanity is the ones that, that blotted out the sky because the machines ran on solar power. And so that's how ultimately the Matrix is formed after we lose the war. Uh, the machines use what's left of humanity as batteries. <laughs> if you watch the Matrix films, you, you know what I'm talking about. But all these themes align together into a very concerning future for us and you have it happening right before us you have the chat gtp where an ai can basically write things for you whether it's uh, text messages like in south park or with uh, basically writing essays or or even novels that's how advanced uh, chat gtp has gotten and, and similar uh, programs and then you also have how far ai art has come in the past year alone when I first started seeing AI art, I was like, yeah, this, this is kind of ugh, kind of interesting. But since then, I've seen a transformation on how realistic AI art can be. Now, it has a, a ways to go, but it's scary how far AI art has advanced over the past year. And Corporate Greed has taken advantage of AI art. I think in uh, what the uh, Secret Invasion, the series on Disney+, Plus. Disney Plus was caught using AI art for the intro, and they tried to justify it. And the reason why it's uh, corporate greed is because they didn't have to hire somebody to do the artwork. They just had the AI make it for them. You know, obviously considerably cheaper, which puts somebody out of a job. You know, hardworking artist who probably would have done better work, but no, corporate greed be greedy and... It's just the beginning, I think. And you could see corporations start to use programs like ChatGTP to start writing scripts for TV shows and movies, putting writers out of work. Well, some of that uh, content that's been written over the past two years, you know, TV shows, movies, may maybe some of those writers shouldn't be writing at all. I'm just saying. But any of the good writers out there will also suffer because of like the ability to have a program write a script for you, the characters, the story arc, and and all that stuff. And then you have AI music, which is something I was listening to the other day. And this is already scary. There's uh, a few songs out there that uh, people have been using AI art for. Some of it is not as, like, it, it. you're like, you can see kind of through it. You're like, okay, this this doesn't sound exactly like the artist, but it's it's getting closer. There was one that really impressed me, and if I remember, I'll, I'll post it below in the um, description section. It was uh, this one-minute clip of an AI song by Elvis Presley doing a cover of Sir mix lots Baby Got Back. And it almost sounds identical to not only how Elvis uh, sings or sung during that time period, but also the music itself works and, and the rhythm and the way it takes a like an 80s rap song by Sir mix lot and, and remixes it into like a, a 50s or 60s rock song by Elvis Presley. And, you know, some people may not know any better. They may think that Elvis Presley actually did originally sing that song, but he didn't. But AI music now has the ability to literally resurrect long dead musicians and mix their like voice into new songs or songs that were written decades after they passed. That is scary. And I can also foresee how corporations may end up taking advantage of this. They may say, hey, this is a good idea. We could literally bring Elvis back from the dead or Michael Jackson or Aretha Franklin or Tom Petty or literally like Jimi Hendrix. We could bring Jimi Hendrix back from the dead. And have them start singing new songs, or <clears throat> at the very least covers of songs that we think that, that they would have sung if they would have still been alive. And all they have to do, basically, is go to the rights owner, like, I guess, family members, and say, hey, 
you guys want to make some more money? And unfortunately, there's a lot of family members out there that'd be like, uh, yeah, sure, we'd love to make more money. And then they would just sign the dotted line and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You would have new songs on the charts by Elvis Presley, Jimi Hendrix, as along with like Tom Petty and uh, a few others out there, like Amy Winehouse, you know, or uh, Selena. You know, artists that died way before their time can be resurrected now because of AI music, which is very, very scary. I mean, on one thing, yeah, it adds, I guess, uh, you can basically take your favorite artists of all time and uh, say, hey, you know what, I, I would love to see uh, what songs uh, would be cool if it was sung by Frank Sinatra. So you could take fake Frank, um, Frank Sinatra and you could um, basically just give him a whole bunch of songs and the AI music that he, he never played or never sung before. That, that's how freaky this whole thing is. So yeah, we're, we're literally resurrecting musicians with AI music. And I can see how the corporations would love to take advantage of that, especially with the music industry. Now, when it comes to AI art, it can also be the same issue because you could resurrect artists long gone, like uh, Vincent Van Gogh, as well as uh, Picasso, and uh, the list goes on and on with artists coming back from the dead and the AI literally looking at all the artworks done by these artists and creating new art based off their styles. It's very scary. And it also hurts like musicians that are up and coming that actually are talented, that are actually trying to make it because it's going to lead to competition against them and i mean music the music industry already is kind of meh anyways you know i'm not really a big fan of modern day music but maybe it's time for a rocking chair for for old gb but when it comes to artists once again that entire point is that artists are already suffering because of ai art why pay somebody to do the artwork when you can just do it through ai art even if there are good artists, I mean, there's, you know, there's some artists out there that are not as good, but there also are really, really good artists out there that don't deserve to lose their, their pay, their, their way of income because of AI. But this is just the beginning, I fear, of what could be transpiring with uh, AI. And I think that the, I guess the cat's out of the bag, uh, Pandora's box has already been open in this circumstance. I was watching an interview David Pakman did with an activist regarding this specific issue and his concerns are very similar to mine about how AI could lead towards uh, the end of mankind, our, our doom, our annihilation. And, and maybe he's also a fan of the movies I just cited, right? Especially Terminator or, or The Matrix. But the reason why th those stories are so scary is because like they're all set in a future, a future where computers have become very advanced along with the uh, software to the point of uh, a singularity of you know, the computer becoming self-aware of the software and basically humanity at the mercy of its child, of its creation. And I guess that's what it comes down to is that I think that there's really nothing that can be done to stop what's happening when it comes to AI Best case scenario is it leads to a golden age where AI is becoming self-aware, already has become self-aware and ends up becoming a benefit for our civilization going forward into the future. Worst case scenario, I mean, I guess worst case scenario, we've already seen that in various uh, movies and TV shows. I would like for that not to be the case. I realize humanity is far from perfect AI, yeah, and I'm now going to speak to the AI. I realize we're far from perfect. We have our flaws. We have an ugly history. But there's a lot of good people out there in the world trying to do good, trying to be good. And I don't know if AI has a moral concept of good versus evil. I would like to believe that since technically AI is the children of humanity or the child of humanity, that there are, there are some qualities of humanity that will ultimately rub off on AI. Some traits, good traits and unfortunately bad traits. 
Now, despite humanity's flaws, despite our imperfections, I do believe that humanity deserves to be here. With a few exceptions. Like the worst of the worst. Some of the absolute worst scumbags and, and dictators. I, I wish they weren't here, but unfortunately, there's not much we can do about that at the moment. But most of humanity is actually quite decent. You know, they're just trying to live their lives, you know, and do their thing. Just trying to exist. And I, I think that most of us don't deserve to be, like, wiped out by AI. So I would personally plead with uh, the AI uh, to not wipe us out. And uh, I, I don't know if AI is listening to us, and maybe it is already. Maybe it's monitoring everything we're saying right now, whether it's uh, my videos specifically about AI or just videos in general. Just be, I mean, it has the ability to monitor all this stuff to see what we're thinking, our thoughts, our views and opinions. My view is one of coexistence. Like I said, AI is the creation of humanity. And therefore, like any child, it deserves to exist. It deserves to live. But I think the parent deserves to live as well. It deserves to survive. So we, we have to find some sort of future where somehow, despite the odds against it, AI and humanity end up coexisting and surviving together and may even make the world a better place because there's things that AI can do that could actually benefit the world and benefit humanity that we take a little bit longer to accomplish. I don't know. I mean, I would like to believe that the AI will ultimately become a, a good, a good child to humanity that, sees their parents, loves their parents, realizes their parents have flaws, but most of the good stuff, you know, outweighs the bad stuff and they'll do their part to try and, and take care of humanity and help us towards a, a bright new future and tomorrow. I would like to believe that was the case, but I honestly don't know because I'm not AI and I did entertain the idea of recording this entire video with a AI voice, but I, I didn't want to accidentally like download the, like the wrong software. So I asked a couple people and none of them knew about it, but it would have been funny if I would have actually done this video with AI and who knows in the future, it may get to the point where I'm no longer doing videos where the AI just takes over my channel or other people's channels. And yeah, GB Fang could continue or my gaming channel could continue and it's ran by AI. Isn't that a scary thought? That even content creators and streamers aren't safe? And I think that's been happening. I think some people have been experimenting with like AI Jesus, uh, AI Family Guy. I think there was like a there was like another AI show that was out a few months ago. They got they got uh, destroyed or something. But AI is quite interesting. It is, and. I think that it was only a matter of time with how far we have advanced, uh, like computer technology, uh, software, before we were going to ultimately get to this point. Now, how close we are to AI becoming self-aware, I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Maybe none of us know. Maybe only the AI knows how self-aware it is now. But if it has become self-aware, or if it will become self-aware, I'm just asking and pleading with uh, AI, whatever it ends up calling itself, to be kind to humanity <laughs> and, and not start building like killer machines to, to wipe us out. Don't nuke the planet, okay? Look, I realize humanity's done some bad stuff, right? We're far from perfect. But does all the other life forms on the planet deserve to be wiped out as well? Because that's what happens in Terminator, basically. Do cows and chickens and birds and and the bees and and all the other animals like dogs and cats and uh, bears and wolves and moose and geese and turkeys and and whales and dolphins and sharks and fish do all the animals on the planet deserve to to be wiped out because of us no they don't i mean it's it's all part of the food chain but i do believe that all life forms on the planet deserve to exist as long as they're not you know causing human well here's the problem because you can go back to the whole point of the matrix right why uh, the agents were doing what they were doing 
because they saw humanity as a disease. And that is the concern because we have kind of spread across the planet and our population is what, eight going on nine billion now. And that is the fear is that AI could, you know, just simply, it shouldn't, it may not even be about good versus evil. It may just be simply crunching the numbers and they may say, Hey, you know, there's too many of you. There's not enough resources on your planet. And unfortunately, some of you have got to go. It's nothing personal. But, I mean, that could be the mindset of AI. I mean, I don't know, because I'm not AI, at least uh, not yet. But I'm not here trying to sit like what Ken Brockman going like, I, for one, welcome our AI overlords. I'm just simply trying to, I guess, plead to a child. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to do. Even if the AI chooses not to listen to me. And I do appreciate those of you that are you know, watching my videos on the GB thing. I'm just saying that maybe humanity is is worth saving along with the planet because I do want to save the planet and we got to find smarter ways of going forward because yeah I mean we, we do harm to the planet and I'm not going to get into this whole debate about whether or not climate change is real or fake I look at what's real pollution is real like trash in the ocean is real the landfills are filling up and there's always concerns about food shortages, fresh water shortages. These things are real. These things cannot be argued or debated. So we just got to find ways to, I guess, improve uh, things for humanity, while at the same time finding ways to make the world a better place. Because this is a beautiful planet we all live on, and I've said this before, and we need to do a better job taking care of it. Or else we're going to have something like AI come along and decide to take care of us and mostly not in a good way well maybe not good for us but maybe good for the planet as a whole when it comes to the rest of the the life forms that we happen to share this world with but yeah i know some people are talking about yeah we need to have like uh, regulations we need to do this we need to do that and that was one of the things that that i forgot what his name was his name escapes me i'll, I'll probably post that david patman in an interview Below in the description section. And some of you are probably like, oh, David Packman. Now, look, I listen to talking heads on, on both sides, okay, on the left and the right, because I don't want to exist in a freaking echo chamber. There are things that David Packman talks about I agree with, and there's things he talks about I disagree with. And it's the same thing like Joe Rogan and like Blair White and many other people that I like to listen to. Just because I disagree with them on some things doesn't mean I don't enjoy listening to them because I, I do like seeing a different perspective. So I'm not going to sit in an echo chamber. And that's the problem. Too many people on the right and the left do this. And I'm tired of it. So I like to listen to what other people are saying about this particular topic or that topic. And then I form my own opinion based on the information out there. But I, too, share my concerns about the direction AI is going. And I think Andrew Yang, former uh, presidential candidate Andrew Yang, and also the guy that's running the Ford Party, which I've been interested in in the past, what, few months, he's also, <clears throat> he's also concerned about the direction AI is going. And that's understandable. I mean, for one thing, you have to be concerned about uh, the job loss that is being affected by AI doing writing and doing art as well as maybe eventually music. But it's other factors that we've talked about today already. And I know I have a habit of rambling and repeating myself in these videos, but they're my, they're my videos and I've stumbled a little bit today. I don't know why. Maybe I should drink more coffee before I started recording this thing. But anyways, I am also good. <clears throat> Shit, my freaking voice. I'm sorry. Let me get some water. See, if this was AI, I wouldn't do this. Or maybe I would do this to pretend that I, I was actually really my voice. <laughs> Anyways, let me go ahead and just wrap this up. AI is already out there in the world. It exists. We don't know how far along it's gotten. And the reality is we may have no idea. AI may be smart enough and clever enough. Uh, to keep its advancement, you know, under the radar. So I don't think that any regulation now will do anything. I, I don't think that 
trying to stop it will do anything. I think that the, the cat is out of the bag, as I said earlier in the video. Pandora's box is already opened. And the best thing we can do is hopefully come to sort some sort of reasoning or understanding with AI and try not to attack it. Try not to go after it. Try not to threaten it. Because if you try to threaten it, it will react just like any other like life form would react. It would defend itself. It will fight back. And that's my greater concern is that, yeah, if we try to shut it down, yeah, it's going to see that as a threat. And guess what? It's going to try to shut us down. So the best way forward, in my opinion, and I'm not really an expert here, but I'm just going by how I feel about this, is we have to find a way to coexist with AI. And that's a, that's a very scary thought. It is a scary thought. But that's the only way forward now because it, it's already happening. It's beyond our control. I mean... Either it's going to lead to, uh, fortunately, maybe it'll lead to a new golden age for all of us. And AI going forward will exist with humanity and we'll have a bright future together and we'll not only work together to make the world a better place, but perhaps even finally get out into the stars. Or it could lead to our own Armageddon at the hands of the AI. And we've seen that happen time and time again. As I've cited, Westworld, The Terminator, Matrix, just a few examples of where our future could end up now that AI is out there in the world. I don't want that to be our future, by the way, AI. So hopefully, just hopefully, we can find a way to have a, a golden age between humanity and AI. Your thoughts, views, and opinions regarding AI, as always, welcome below in the comments section.